a renowned scholar and director at Abuja School of Social and Political Thought and ex-NERC boss Dr. Sam Ahmadi has raised concerns over INEC's plans to use uh, the Lakers Parks Management Committee Chairman Musliu Akinsanya, also known as MC Olomo, in the distribution of voting material, saying it will be a big risk. In a statement, uh, he said that INEC should go the extra mile to ensure that it does not jeopardize the credibility of the elections, adding that any dealing with MC Olomo's controlled platform is a complete negation of the objectivity and neutrality. Uh, now, he also said that, um, well, INEC in a reply said that the logistics contract for the distribution of election materials is with drivers and not transport unions. Uh, well, joining us to discuss this is Achike Chude, he's a public affairs analyst, and Shegu Shopito, who is the Chairman Accountability, Candor and Transparency Network Act. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Great. Um, let's start by looking at this situation. INEC has come out to say, we're, this is what we naturally do. We have a, a, a relationship with these uh, transporters because we need them every election cycle um, in the distribution and transportation of these very sensitive uh, materials um, during elections. But then I, I want to start by asking you, Shegun, uh, <laughs> how do you separate the man from his drivers? Because whether it's a union or it's a group of drivers, this man, one way or the other, is involved. Uh, but Einek is saying it's not the umbrella body. We're just picking drivers who would do our bidding, which is to make sure that our materials get to the destination that he has to get to on time and, of course, intact. Um, can you really have this conversation without mentioning MC Oluomo? Um, you know, thanks for having me again. Um, it's a very... I sympathize with Einek, to be honest. Um, it's, a, it's a difficult place that they find themselves. Um, and I think that it's a good thing that these concerns are being raised um, so that for future elections, they have to find an alternative. You know, because when you look at it on the face of it, it makes absolutely no sense um, for you to move sensitive materials during a general elections um, and have the logistics of that movement being in control of a major player in that election. Um, I mean, we all know who this gentleman is. We all know his antecedents. We know his origins and how he's become what he is today. And he owes his very existence as, you know, that name MC Oloma would not exist if not for one of the candidates in this election. You know, so to have him um, being the one more or less coordinating, serving as a coordinating point for the movement of materials is, 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 um, is wrong. Um, however, having said that, you do also have to recognize that elections um, in Nigeria, I mean, a Lagos state alone is the size of, is much bigger than many countries in Africa. And running elections in Lagos state alone is a logistic challenge. It's, it's a big job. And um, aggregating enough vehicles to move materials during, on election day and maybe bef just before elections and just after elections is a lot of work. Um, can, are there alternatives? I think there are alternatives, but uh, those alternatives are not easy to activate and will take time. So I sympathize with INEC. I think I kind of agree with them that they may not have a choice at the moment, uh, but uh, I think if there's any way that some sort of controls um, can control mechanisms can be put in place to prevent uh, manipulation of the system because of this um, compromise that they've had to take, then I think it would be very good to do that. Achike, um, just, just to pick up from where Shegun dropped off, um, he's saying that there are options, uh, but then he doesn't know how realistic or how accessible these options are. I heard somebody on the radio today talk about the fact that we have the army, we have several other options. If we must rely on road transportation workers, then we need to have extra security. My question is, do we even have enough security for election day? Well, um, when we have adequate security, I mean, if this is the very first election we're having in this country, that would be a different thing. So between the police, the army, the navy, the other, the paramilitary forces, road safety, 
uh, you know, NCDC, uh, NSCDC, um, we will have enough uh, to uh, patrol uh, the polling uh, stations. Uh, so it's uh, um, you know, but but then you you go back to so we have a adequate uh, you know security personnel uh, you, know, you know for this um, election. But uh, to go back to the issue of uh, the logistics that uh, we are you know talking about, uh, it is like um, the case. I I, I look at it as uh, a case of sleeping with the enemy. You know, uh, in the sense that uh, this is a major player. This is a very seriously politically exposed. Uh, individual who has taken sides and they're one of the most ardent supporters of a, uh, of a, a, a candidate, one of the candidates and uh, he has made it uh, very clear uh, and in many video uh, you know, videos we have seen online uh, about uh, the absolute imperativeness of uh, his person and that's the presidential candidate of the candidate of the APC, emerging the president of uh, this country. So he has thrown his heart in the ring. And then, but beyond that, again, when you talk about uh, the garages and parks, uh, which uh, the um, uh, the NEC, INEC wants to use, it is a, a government agency, you know, a government that is controlled by the politicians that have thrown their heart in the ring, that are being that are going to be involved or that are involved in this electoral process. And this is one of their most ardent supporters. So why give you know this kind of a responsibility uh, to him? And it's not about time. And if, if they say, uh, look, we don't have enough time, they've always had time. This, I mean, everybody knew that uh, in all this while that uh, logistics will form the basis of um, of uh, of uh, what INEC will be doing on election day in terms of deployment of materials. And that uh, these garages and parks came out as a result of um, or emerged as a result of uh, the intra-union. A crisis between, uh, you know, NCO Lomo and then uh, the leadership of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, NURTW, headquartered in Abuja, mm. you know, and eventually uh, there was a, a schism, you know, a, a, a faction, and then the Lagos State government took side with one of the uh, faction. This happened about over a year ago. So the election was always good. Everybody knew when the election was going to take place. Uh, in the country. And so the issue of logistics was always there. It's one of the most important things. Mm. So if anybody says that, um, you know, time is short, it is strange. They knew. I mean, INEC knew that uh, NURTW was no longer as, as seriously involved in Lagos State as they used to be. And INEC should not tell us really that uh, they signed contracts with drivers. They don't sign contracts with drivers. They start, sign contracts with the unions, with NURTW, to hold their union members to account. Well, 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 well Jake, let, let me come in. Let me come in there quickly. The 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 NURT yeah. the NURTW um, has said, and I want to quote them directly, that they have appointed coordinators to arrange transportation of polling materials and personnel for the forthcoming elections in not just Lagos but other parts of the state where its activities were originally banned. So now they 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 have said that look, we're not going to be doing this with Lagos Garage and Parks Management. We're going to be working in the states across the federation as the NURTW. So again, it looks like INEC might be caught in the in the middle of some NURT politics in itself. Yeah, well, well obviously because um, uh, if you if you look at that, so I was saying that uh, the issue of uh, signing contract with drivers is not exactly the truth. That's not the case. They sign, and you can see from what the NURTW has said. And we have had many briefings with uh, INEC at the highest level of INEC. You know, um, also together with um, uh, the RECs in some states of the country. And so part of what we have always, uh, you know, uh, considered as uh, of primary concern has been the issue of logistics, the deployment of men and materials, ad hoc stack of, of INEC and materials. And each time they have always talked about the collaboration that they have with, with NURTW. They have never talked about individual individual union members. You know, so it is not about uh, the individuals. So otherwise, they will give us names of, uh, they will read out names of uh, individuals that, are, that will be driving uh, the uh, vehicles, that will be conveying all of these um, electoral materials uh, to the various uh, uh, destinations. So uh, it's a problem. And like I said, you know, apart beyond even the, the LURTW, you have the, the Ubers. The Ubers now have an association. They are registered with, I think, the, uh, the, 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 the TUC and the, the NLC. You know, and then you also have um, have uh, the, the other you know interstate road transport uh, uh, you know um, uh, organizations. 
And this, this people are also responsible, you know, organizations. And uh, they, all, all I needed to do was to have started the process of discussing and negotiating with them for a very, very long time, a very long time ago. That obviously maybe did not happen because we have not been told that they had tried other alternative arrangements. So I think that uh, this is one situation that INEC should not have gotten itself, you know, into. You can see what is happening on social media. Everybody talking. Some other presidential candidates are saying, are talking about, uh, you know, uh, 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 the fact that uh, they cannot trust a process that is handled in, uh, in, you know, uh, you know, under the edges of, uh, you know, under the control of uh, the present uh, uh, rec. You know, and then this matter has now brought his participation in that um, election in Oshu State to the fore. Perhaps he has not done anything wrong, but people are beginning to also, uh, you know, talk about uh, his past activities in uh, in Oshu State and the fact that uh, they had a wrong election at a particular point in time. Okay. Let me come back to you, uh, Shegun. Now, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, has requested for the removal of the... Um, INEC rec in Lagos for even considering to use MCO Law more or members of his platform uh, to move or distribute election materials. And this is not one call. Governors of different political or governorship candidates of different political parties in Lagos have also, um, you know, conducted a press conference, you know, speaking about this issue. It seems to have ruffled a lot of feathers, even with INEC coming out to say, well, we don't have any business with MCO Loma. We have a business with Lagos parks and garages. Um, do you see INEC, you know, let's say sidestepping on this issue, taking a walking back on it and deciding to go another route or like Achike said, is the timing too short? And, and where does this leave the average Lagos, uh, Lagos voter in terms of trusting the process? Um, it, it's, it's, it's a sad um, situation that INEC has. They boxed themselves into a corner, basically, because, you know, it's, it's late. Um, we're saying this is two weeks away from the presidential elections. You know, it's exactly two weeks away from today. Um, and uh, four weeks away from the gubernatorial and the State House of Assembly elections. Um, it's late. Uh, the the process involved, people need to understand, you know, I, I know Achike would know this, uh, people need to understand that the process involved leading up to elections starts months, sometimes years, before the elections. So the meetings that concretize this arrangement would have happened last year, for example, you know, signing of the agreement with the NURTW slash Lagos State uh, Parks Management uh, committee would have happened last year, not now. After those meetings, the operational side of activating this agreement would also have started happening last year. You would have had trainings for those bus drivers. You would have had engagements between the bus drivers and the various recs and the various, you know, they're going to explain to them the nomenclature and the architecture of INEC, the structure of INEC, you know. So, all of those things cannot be undone in two weeks, sadly. Um, you can't go into an agreement with another union, you know, like, like my colleague has said. There are so many options, actually. Um, but you can't activate those options now because, you know, you, you, you simply can't train people. You can't, you know, the meetings that will need to happen, the back and forth before agreements are arrived at, how much are people going to be paid, for example. Just the commercial side of the, the conversation will take weeks, maybe months. You know, so it's too late. There's nothing that can be done. So now, I think it is now the duty of INEC to show very concrete terms what um, control mechanisms they are going to institute, perhaps outside of their ordinary mechanisms, to ensure that the transparency of this process is protected so that the credibility of the elections will not become a challenge. Now, let's not forget that in Nigeria, the standard practice is that elections are challenged. It's almost inevitable that regardless of this issue, this particular issue, most of these elections are going to end up in court anyway. So what INEC is doing invariably is that you're already giving ammunition to the combatants in court in the elections to contest the outcome of the elections if it doesn't go their way. You know, because, you know, I mean, like, this gentleman is an active participant in the election. How can he be the custodian of the materials and, and moving people? 
how can we guarantee that they will not sabotage the process or something else will you know below the table will not happen in the process so I'm, I'm not in any way i'm not in any way holding brief for mc Loma or the packs and garages people but mm. i'm just out of curiosity what exactly could he possibly do i mean we're told that the beavers are going to work really well this the process is going to be free fair and credible because of the beavers i mean we're made to believe that what can no. mc Loma possibly do in the space of taking it from where from my next office to wherever they're being delivered i'm just if, saying if, out of curiosity what can he possibly yes. do if if you are a straightforward thinking person if you you know like you are and maybe i am and my colleague on this panel is you know then you you think the way you just talk now <laughs> but politicians don't think like this. They look for every loophole that is available in systems. They, are, they set out from day one, before the election starts, they are having meetings as we speak now on how to compromise this process. They are not concerned with winning the elections fairly. They are concerned with winning, right? So every loophole that you make available, they will exploit. So yes. for example, um, or show elections, please, can somebody explain to me how overvoting happened in spite yeah. of us? <laughs> you know, so 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 anything can happen along the way. The materials are going to be moved to the polling units. They're going to be moved to the racks and then to the polling units. You know, before the elections, and the materials will be moved back after the elections. That process of moving the materials back, anything can happen. You know, um, Beavers is supposed to scan um, election results at each polling unit. Who's to say what would happen between when uh, after the elections and they moved? To the to the to the various destinations, you know, during the movement, anything can happen, you know. So it's it's um it's really really unfortunate. Like I said, I think INEC has a duty. They are duty bound because of this compromise, because of this chink in their armor, to provide. I think INEC needs to address the public in, in order to not to uh, break co public confidence in this election and give us very clear measures that will be put in place. Maybe they need to install cameras. I don't know. You know, they, they need to think. They put themselves in this mess. So they need to think out of the box to sh ensure that whether in terms of public perception or in terms of in case of litigation, they need to be able to prove that uh, using this compromised um, um, player in the system has not compromised the election in any way. Mm -hmm. Finally, Achike, because we're out of time. Um, there have been concerns. Um, today I was speaking with uh, the director of Enough is Enough and um, I looked at their complaint log um, and um, a lot of people complained about the fact that they went to their polling, um, their registration centers, and I'm talking about PVCs now, um, to get their PVCs and they, they were told that the PVCs were not there. But a few of them uh, those PVCs found their ways into the hands of certain people in their areas who came to their homes with those PVCs uh, to hand it to them and then ask them who they were, go they were going to be voting for. And so this, is a, this again calls to question, um, you know, how trustworthy INEC officials are in terms of handing out PVCs because INEC in, on its own has said, no third party can come and get your PVC. You have to come in person. But how these do, did these PVCs get into the hands of these supposed no, party men? Yeah. Yeah, well, this goes to the heart of the question, the observation you made to Shegu, which he adequately answered. What could possibly go wrong? What could, you know, uh, the uh, members of uh, the drivers of uh, garages and parts, what, you know, harm could they possibly do? And I think Shegu's answer was really apt and succinct. You do not... You know, create this uh, situation for conspiracy theories for people to become you know suspicious. Of course, you just talked about one bridge, for instance. And so you can be imagine other bridges that we might not know about that the politicians have already worked out. Look, if anything goes wrong in this election, even before it goes wrong, they will remind you that people have been saying all this while that there were certain people that were going from house to house all you know all this time collecting the details, the biometric details, you know, based on the numbers on people's pvc cards and so that that that's that's all you know one side so with you now appointing somebody that is closely aligned with the government or you know with a, a major presidential candidate people are going to put two and two together you just talked about people carrying cards from the polling you know from uh, the INEC uh, centers to people's houses and asking them where they are going to vote they are also going to remind you you know how people went to the houses and collected biometric numbers or numbers mm. And for whatever purpose and then they will also now add it together with the fact that a particular 
you know, uh, 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 organization, agency of government that is heavily involved in the support of a particular candidate is now being given the responsibility for the logistics. So by the time you put all of this together, and then the, also the speculation about the possibility of people being able to break into the beavers and compromise the machines. Mm. So when you look at all of these things, it is not too far. And it won't be too far for people to say, look, we told you that there is something going on. Yeah. And that this apartment of uh, garages and parks is the culmination of all of the plans that well, are being undertaken by certain politicians. You don't give that, you know, people that opportunity to begin to look at things from that perspective. Well, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot to talk about. I'm hoping that we'll have time next time to continue to have these conversations, even as we get ready for the elections. Achike Chude is a public affairs analyst, and Shegu Shopito is the chairman, Accountability, Candor, and Transparency Network. That's ACT Network. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, unfortunately, time is not on our side, but thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. And that's the show this week. I hope that you enjoyed every bit of it. But if you missed, here is a quick highlight of all of our conversations this week. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a pleasant weekend. See you on Monday.